Well, the pipeline is in limbo. British Columbia has turned to the court to find out if they have the power to stop the Kinder Morgan pipeline. And guess what? They say it's highly unlikely their court challenge will get a decision before the May 31st deadline, which is the deadline Kinder Morgan is set to pull the plug on the pipeline. Coincidence? Not sure. The federal government still insists, though, that the pipeline will get built. The question is, how will they do it? But here's the twist. They now have a summer jobs program, and the federal government will be providing an environmental group with money that will be used to stop the Trans Mountain uh, pipeline from ever getting built. Is this just a case of free speech or is it a sign that the federal government isn't really behind this project at all? Joining me now to talk about all that and more, the Conservative leader, Andrew Scheer. Good to have you here, sir. Great to be on. Uh, what do you think of, if you were the federal government, if you're the Prime Minister right now, what would you do, what would the response be to BC's uh, reference to their superior court? Well, if I can just put this in context a little bit, because we have to understand why the May 31st deadline is so important. It's important because the confidence in our energy sector has been shattered. Uh, the ban on tanker traffic, uh, killing Northern Gateway, the Liberals killed Energy East, the carbon tax, now Bill C-69. So the, the government needed to not do things months ago. We called on Justin Trudeau to meet with Premier Horgan in January and February. They have they only met a couple of weeks ago, so they've been so late to this game. Uh, we need a federal government that's going to stand up for federal jurisdiction. This is a project so how that, though? well, there, there are tools at the government's dis d disposal to ensure that this project can get built by declaring it in the national interest, by ensuring that other aspects around the pipeline can, can, can uh, not be used concrete. as impediments. Okay, one of the big things is, and Jason Kenney has talked about this, stop transfers to BC to force their hand. Would you support that? I think when we're talking about levels uh, of, of action like that, we're, we're, we're kind of losing the big picture, which is that we shouldn't have a government that has to punish uh, the people of a province because they fail to take leadership for months. Uh, when you look at why Kinder Morgan is saying this, they're not saying this because uh, there's something magic happens on May 31st. They're saying this because there's no signal that this federal government is going to champion them. But there's, how there's do they give this signal? This is Repeal C-69, uh, uh, scrap the carbon tax, lift the tanker ban, which would allow Northern Gateway to be built. Invite Energy East but back to, be, to the to table. Be, to that, that would all send confidence to say, okay, we may have an issue with but the... how would that... But how would stopping the carbon, a price on carbon because it's showing, in any way it's showing, do anything for a pipeline? Because right now what's happening is people around the world understand that under Justin Trudeau, there will not be new pipelines built, that there will not be new big energy projects built because of all these other things. If we had a federal government that was sending the signal that Canada was a place that you can do business in, then they would say, okay, well, we'll wait out the British Columbia uh, court decision because we have all these other things that give us confidence that we can get a successful okay, project. Okay, to there. be fair though, first of all, linking the carbon, the price on carbon, I don't see the link there, but let's just... Uh, it's they, a huge cost to the energy sector. It's another cost that makes them less effective, uh, less competitive versus other countries. Does it bother you that that uh, because you've campaigned against the price on carbon a lot, that BC, which has had a price on carbon, uh, Quebec now, Ontario and Alberta, those have all been, I mean, BC and Ontario are the fastest, and Quebec, the fastest growing economies. That the price on carbon, in fact, according to the Ecofiscal Commission, has not hurt those economies, it's helped those economies. Those are the, the fastest growing economies. In other words, the link between a price on carbon and hurting the economy is not there. What do you say to that? Well, I believe absolutely it has hurt Canadian families in those provinces. I don't support a carbon tax. I'll leave it up to voters in individual okay. provinces to decide what they want their provincial government to do. I don't believe that the federal government should impose a carbon tax. Okay. I will repeal the Liberal carbon tax. And people will say to you, all right, Andrew, you don't like that. What will you do? about climate change to reduce carbon. Anything? Do you have a plan? Well, exactly. And, and, and the Liberals would love to have people believe that the choice is a carbon tax or nothing. I reject that. The previous Conservative government took real steps to lower emissions, working with industry, finding ways to incentivize uh, efficiencies in terms of emitting into the but atmosphere. Not even, the Liberals, not even close to reaching your own target, to be fair. The Liberals signed on to are the exact same targets that we had. Right? We will be unveiling a very detailed and comprehensive plan because we believe that Canada has to be part of the solution. We're about a year away from the next election, a little bit more. I guarantee you we will have a comprehensive message to Canadians that doesn't just focus in on... That will reach... That will reach just, I'm just asking, because you know, you're, this is the big issue, because it ties in with pipelines, as you said. 
the, the former Harper regulations would not come close to meeting this, the targets that the Harper government set, and you, you want to keep those. Will you unveil a plan that will actually meet the Paris targets? Of course I will un, uh, unveil a plan that reaches the targets that, that we have already voted in favor of. We, we, we believe that Canada has to be part of the solution. We want okay. to have, we will, we will have a, right. a meaningful plan to reduce emissions, and that will also tackle other major environmental issues. Let's talk about the summer jobs program. Been pretty controversial. The federal government has this plan where they say you can apply, you can get money to support an intern, but you have to, if you're a group that in any way, shape or form opposes pro-choice and their views on reproduction, they have to have an attestation that you cannot use any of the money for that. Many religious groups say no way, it's against our principles. Now we've to, so, so Bible camps in Alberta are not getting any money, they're not eligible. Meantime, an advocacy group called Dogwood, which is specifically going to use the money to oppose the Trans Mountain Pipeline, got the money. Is it hypocrisy? Or is it something that you have defended, free speech? It's complete hypocrisy because it's not quite as, as, as you let into it. The liberal attestation was not required solely for groups that were involved in advocacy. It was obligatory for everybody. Uh, if you were trying to hire someone to work in a rural museum, they had to uh, sign on That's to right. that attestation. A local municipality, the town administrator would have to sign that attestation. So what they were doing was forcing people to believe the same thing that Justin Trudeau believed, to hire a summer student to do anything. Now here we have a situation where in British Columbia, or an organization is using the funding to specifically organize protests, to advocate, to, right. to block a project that is in the national interest. So this this Liberal government is taking tax dollars from people who have lost their jobs in the energy sector and giving it to a group of people. Do you think they shouldn't give it to Dogwood? I don't believe that. That I, I believe that we need to, to have a look at this program and say, why is the federal government funding advocacy groups? You know, advocacy groups are free to, well, to raise money on their own. Do you think they should fund religious groups? I, you know, What's the difference? I'm just trying. My, my confusion it's, it's, it's on this is the, the Conservative government didn't want to fund groups like Planned Parenthood because they used reproductive issues as a litmus test for funding, as the Liberals have, okay? So both Conservatives and, and Liberals have used this issue as a litmus test. Then on the other side though, there's not a litmus test for other groups and that's why I don't understand. We've never argued the point that the government doesn't have the right to choose what types of activities are funded. We just say that the government shouldn't force a view on your peer inside your conscience and dictate what you but should But on have. reproductive issues, the conservative government would pull funding as had we the liberal? We, we never forced people to on take a position. We on never maternal health, you wouldn't fund groups like Planned Parenthood, you know that. And by the way, the conservatives funded Dogwood. Right? The same group got money from the Conservatives. I'm not sure what that money went for. This this grant went specifically mm -hmm. to organizing protests. It literally says right. in there, black and white. Do you think they white. should pull the money? I don't believe that groups that are using those funds to actively advocate protests, I don't know that I've, we... So you say no. I'm just. I thought you were a free speech guy. It, okay, you campaigned on the free speech guy. Let people free who disagree speech is with different. Talk. Free speech is different than using government funds to advocate or to protest. The difference okay. here is that we. In fact, okay. what the liberals are doing is that you. They're taking away someone's right of free speech or free thought, free opinion by pulling their funding if they don't share the same view. What we're saying is, it. The government has the right to say these types of activities aren't funded. They don't have the right to impose their values or their beliefs on someone, and that's the difference here. It's a, it's a huge issue. I know the Liberals would love this to be characterized as a free speech issue. It's not. It's about them funding the very people that they say need to get grant permission. The, Justin Trudeau has invented the term of social license and empowering all these protesters. And then he goes out and gives them money to block the very thing that he's trying to get built. I gotta leave it there. Uh, Anderson, great day in the program, sir. Always fun.